All right, and now we're live. Welcome, everybody. Glad to see all of you guys in the chat. So as you can probably tell from the epic and metal music that we had playing at the start, today will be an episode of similarly epic proportions. So if we could start out with the intro first, Ken, and get straight into it. Definitely. All right. <clears throat> hey, guys. Uh, welcome back to The Drawing Table, where we have chill and casual conversations about art. And of course, about creating it as well. We are your hosts, Ken Darmadi, and also... Jordan Tuffin. Today, we will start with a brand new series called Design Jam. Okay. Which... Right. Followed by a Q&A session and an artwork of the week's showcase. We really love having discussions and conversations with you all, so we invite you to join in the chat as well throughout the podcast. So you may be having the question, what is the design jam? So for the design jam, we have prepared a mock-up brief for you guys to design along with us or to do it at your own time. If you decide to join in, you will be able to send in your work to us for a chance to be featured or have a live feedback of it done on the next episode. And we think that this will be a great chance to have more people practice their design thinking along with other people. And we're very excited to try out this new segment and we really hope that you guys join in with us. Yeah, definitely. I think it's just one of those things where if you're designing the same subject matter or on based on the same brief with other people it's just really cool to see how people interpret it definitely like it's a re it'll be a reflection of their styles their preferences and of course you know just uh being able to see how different people just approach it as well so for this week we have asked you guys to vote on the brief that we would be doing for this episode and here are the results of it see it on my window mm -hmm. well there we go so we had three options uh, so the first one being actually just to give a little bit of a context we asked you guys to vote on a monster which the bounty hunters of this specific brief that we have created to hunt so we will uh, so we actually put up three options the first one being the venomous flying snake the speedy burning turtle and the last one invisible electric chameleon and i think you can see from the results of the poll which one of them won by quite a landslide despite the valiant efforts of the other two so we will be doing a brief based on the speedy burning turtle right since it won overwhelmingly against the other two beasts yeah so uh Okay, so if we could yes. get into the brief as well. All right, so for our very first brief, uh, we have one from the company Hatcom, creators of the hit series Beast Hunter. Uh, I know them. They want them. to create, <laughs> yeah, they're very famous. You should know them. Yeah. So, well, they also yeah. made the famous game Road Brawler as well. One of my favorites. <laughs> sure. Okay. So they want to create a brand new IP. Oh, you have a hard time hearing my voice? Is, hmm. Well, well we can on. try pumping up the volume. So is everything else okay though, guys? Like the sound of my voice and... How's, how's my voice now? Is it, do I have to shout like this or? I don't know. Well, I mean, it's the same for me because since we're on a Discord call. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we'll just keep on going, but if there's any problems or if you think that Ken's sound is still not loud enough, please let us know in the chat. All right, yeah. Ken. Okay. So our company, our favorite company, Hatcom, the creators of the Beast Hunter series, they want to create a brand new IP, but they're still not entirely sure what the art style and what the target platform is. What they do know is that it will be another beast hunting game. The brief requires us to design some props to get ideas of what the technology level is in this world and what it would be like. 
and you can have a look at the brief for yourself actually and Ken will post that up in the chat so you guys can have a look through it and you know even get a head start on us if you'd like and the brief reads we want to develop a brand new IP the theme is beast hunting but we have no idea of what the art direction is like we want you to come up with ideas for the level of technology in this world Design one to three tools in one cohesive mm -hmm. style for the beast hunters to hunt a speedy burning <laughs> turtle. <laughs> it can range from weapons, traps, armors, po potions, bags, anything really to help us figure out the tech level of this brand new world. The beast speedy burning turtle. Try saying that five times really fast. <laughs> Has no design yet, but we have a short description of its ability. So it is a turtle that is able to retract its limbs into its shell. So if you can imagine just it sucking in. And then by doing that, it can blast out jets of flames where its limbs used to be to propel itself at high speeds. This creature is very difficult to capture for this very reason. Due to its hard and heat resistant shell, it's also very tough to pierce. In addition to that, the flames that it outputs is also very hot that makes even moving close to it a challenge so to summarize they have a monster with no design yet and the client wants us to design some tools that will be used by a group of beast hunters to hunt them yes so yeah so bring up your tools of choice mm -hmm. and please join with us as we design mm -hmm. the tools and props that that is used by the beast hunters to hunt the speedy burning turtle. Yes, and just I guess a, a small reminder before we start on this brief is that you know, while we do have we created this design jam segment in mind uh, for the people that perhaps want to learn more about design or get into design but feel intimidated or maybe lack experience working with a client, um, yeah, we created it as if we got we get a brief from the client and but more important than that is for us to just have fun with the brief you know just um, learning how to do it in a pressure-free environment without the expectation of making it the most epic and uh, most original design that the world has ever seen <clears throat> oh and TCK asked hunt or kill or bring a uh, hunt and kill or bring back alive and i think it's up to you to suggest anything really because it's a brand new ip so yes um, it's yeah it's really open to interpretation for mm -hmm. now yeah so it's really up to you uh, it depends on what kind of hunters they are maybe they do it defensively and maybe they do it for bounty and they need to bring it back alive you know for uh for it to be brought back and perhaps used as a beast of burden or something like that so or maybe it's it's like an mmo where you can be like a illegal poachers or you can be like i don't know something else that's yeah. that's more <laughs> in line with the justice system of the world yes but yeah so it's very open so ken and i uh have kind of cheated a little bit and did a brainstorm map and also collected our own references before the podcast has started so what we'll be doing is taking turns just going through the ideas one by one and once again if you guys have any ideas that you want to bounce off of us while you're working on your own feel free to do so you know this is meant to be more of a collaborative effort so we're going to switch our scenes so that we can show what we've been working on okay let's switch all right so I guess I'll be the one that starts, Ken. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so usually when I get a brief and after reading it and trying to understand it, what I start off with is a mind map similar to what I did with the previous architecture piece. And why I start off with a mind map is that I firmly believe that designing is about problem solving. And when you are working with a client typically, you will want to make the most efficient use of your time. And why I do a mind map is that by using words, it is able to spark like thousands of images and just 
a lot of these different solutions without having to go through the labor and time to create a, a visual representation of it. As some people say, I know a picture is worth a thousand words, and I think in this case, a word can, I mean, a word can represent a thousand pictures, and each pe person will represent it, or at least visualize it differently. So, I started off by having like a core of the you know the key, brief uh, keywords of the brief itself, which is a speedy burning turtles, and I immediately started to think of, you know, what kind of hunters would be the ones hunting the speedy burning turtle. So I actually came up with a few ideas and some of it was mentioned in our discussion earlier actually. So one of the first ones that I had is that perhaps it's a Nordic clan, you know, of maybe like ice Vikings. And the reason why they hunt the turtles is because the turtles have been wrecking the ships, you know, that they have been sailing out to conquer other lands. And in their frustration, you know, and defiance, they've decided to fight back. So perhaps this clan also has like a bunch of, uh, is more what you call mystical, and they have like a bunch of witches that can enhance their weaponry or even their equipment with ice uh, properties or capabilities. And I've even just had a other few keywords just to think of perhaps the approximate level of technology. So maybe they are more, uh, I guess, brutish with their weapons with a touch of magic, you know. I think, we're, I think you're going with something very fantasy, uh, like like high level fantasy with magic. And yeah, I mean, magic, I guess. yeah, it's kind of my comfort zone um, since that's what I really grew up with with a lot of RPGs and uh, I will admit this is quite a challenging brief um, yeah. <laughs> and I think when you implement the factor of magic into it it does simplify things a little bit Definitely. and Blessings of the Nine also says sounds like an Ammon Amarth track brutal oh definitely you know it would be perfect if I was making those designs while listening to some of their songs but I wouldn't want our uh, audio to be muted so yeah perhaps not and uh, Ken, this is the idea that I think you mentioned is like having the black market. And I thought about maybe having like an oriental black market hunters. So maybe they're the kind of people that hunt you know, these creatures so that they can take the shells and fashion furniture or weapons out of it or jewelry. Or maybe they believe that if they grind down the shell and you know drink it with some blood of the turtle, it will give them like, you know... Um, <laughs> Sexual stamina or something, <laughs> something like that. You know, but basically, it's just these kinds of people that sell stuff on the black market. And maybe their technology is a little bit more advanced, so maybe a little bit more to do with gunpowder. And one, one more uh, that I thought about is having a tribal a clan of warriors. So perhaps these turtles terrorize their villages just you know, going crazy and burning down their uh, straw huts, you know, and they have more primitive technology and maybe hunting it down is seen as a rite of passage with their, within their community. And seeing your mind map makes my mind map look pale in comparison. <laughs> well, yours is a lot easier to read. Like, I really do view mind maps as kind of like a word vomit, you know, so yeah, it's no, so I disorganized. No, I think it's it's fine as long as it works for you. Oh yeah, it does. And usually I don't show it to anyone else. So yeah, <laughs> I try to be a bit neater for the podcast. And, you know, that's more of the logistical side of things. And I did think about other things, just trying to push the, I guess, boundaries a little bit, just by thinking about, okay, let's just say if, you know, we're talking about turtles here. I'm thinking about things like what are its natural predators? Perhaps I can incorporate the design language of them into the tribe of the bounty hunters. So I thought about, I looked it up on Google and Google said that killer whales and tiger sharks are among its uh, prime predators. So I thought- I got you pick killer whales. Oh, you, you picked the other. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, like I'm actually really curious just to see what you have select, I mean, come up with for your solutions, Ken, 
because sure. <laughs> I get the feeling that there's some overlaps that we do have. Definitely, because I think that the monster itself is quite specific. Yeah, you know? that's true. I mean, I guess if we just said it's like uh, a, a general sea monster, like a kraken, you know, sea serpent or whatever, we could definitely play around with that a lot more. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Uh, and yeah, latte milk. It does sound pretty brutal. We it, it. I mean, if you are approaching this brief as well, feel free to make it. Maybe uh, the tribe of hunters is people that hunt the animals so that they can bring them into their care, you know. Maybe so they, they can live in harmony, if that's <laughs> what you want your take to be. Yeah. And yeah, uh, I've also thought about spinning and I tried to see if I could come up anything from it. Like I wrote down like yo-yo, swirling dervish, a Beyblade. So I'm just trying to visualize how this how this uh, turtle is burning uh, and I actually had in mind uh, if you know those spinning fireworks where you light it up and it kind of spins around like a wheel that's how I'm imagining the turtle to go is like just swirling around the place like crazy so that would actually c help me come up with a more specific solution <laughs> so is that what you thought about too TCK because funnily enough Ken you're imagining it in a different way aren't you yeah, uh, I think you, you came up with this idea that the turtle spins around because it propels its, uh, like this, this jet, yeah. jet like thing in a circle. In a way. Yeah. But mine is, I don't know, it's more simple because it just flies straight. Not yeah. fly, but swims straight. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess it can swim with its flame somehow. <laughs> Maybe it boils <laughs> the water around it as well. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> kind of, oh. kind of. It kind of boils the water behind it. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's a cool yeah. idea actually. Oh, and I just like to say welcome and hello to all the people that just joined in on the podcast as well. We see an increased number of viewers. We viewers, so please wow. say hi. So we, uh, we know that you're there. And I also even wrote down for spinning like a fidget spinner. So maybe it has a shell shaped like a fidget mm -hmm. spinner. I don't know. And I actually thought about burning to think about perhaps what are some of the solutions that people can come up with to counter this burning turtle. So I had like fire extinguisher, maybe depriving it of air or maybe having a dirt and sand bomb to kind of extinguish it. But I thought that, you know, I'll go with the direction of ice since it has potential to work well with magic. So I thought about frost and aurora, aurora borealis. Oof, that's a mouthful. And maybe like crystals or glaciers in the equipment design to really reinforce that design language. And yeah, something as simple as water or foam. And of course, um, as a, just to remind myself what I could design, like I just made a list of possible tools like weapons. Maybe it's a hammer to break through the tough shell, you know, <laughs> or maybe an ice pick. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> no, because I had the same idea. All right. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll see what else we have overlap. And for the armor, I thought maybe they created a barrier to shield themselves against the frantic movements of the turtle and maybe fire resistant. Maybe it's made out of the same shell that the turtle has because it, this client did say that it was flame resistant. So maybe from previous turtles they've hunted and same for the shields. I thought maybe tools, they can use mines or a variation of a Czech hedgehog where, you know, it's like metal bars with barbed wire around it just to kind of slow movement down or maybe nets that are fired from cannons. And of course, one of the cheap and easy ways out, especially if it's a game, you know, you can have like something like an ice resist potion where, you know, the player can drink it. Oh, not ice resist, sorry, a fire resist potion where they drink it and it gives them fire resistance. So that's an easy one to do. And yeah. probably need some potion to prolong their breaths underwater. <laughs> yeah, probably. And Kaibak Art also asks, designing Pokemon. Well, not so much <laughs> the Pokemon itself, but just the... Uh, the equipment that will be used to, yeah, the tools that will be used to hunt these Pokemon-like creatures. <laughs> <laughs> and Latte Milky also says, why am I imagining like cooling down Tesla car? Hey, maybe that's, uh, that's another thing that could be used to counter 
the speedy burning turtle or i guess sbt <laughs> for something a little bit shorter but yeah i mean that's my mind map and i will move on to my reference image as well very quickly and we can move on to ken's so i've taken images of killer whales and then also the tiger shark and the shell itself and the jaw of a tiger shark and i thought maybe the turtle could look a bit more fearsome like a snapping turtle you know so uh just to help solidify what the creature they're fighting as looks like and yeah just a bunch of different weapons and i've decided to go with the nordic clan so yeah i bought i found a bunch of other items such as you know uh, with the carvings and design language that they have and even in relation to ice you know aurora borealis and frost so maybe that's caked around their equipment or you see the pattern or the shimmer of an aurora borealis on their weapons because it's been infused with ice magic you know so i think that could be really cool and this metal lizard seeing all those frost on him i think could look really cool if it's on a weapon or something and yeah some defensive items and just some patterns and also some art nouveau uh glassware that i've looked at and metal work and i thought it would be so cool to design a potion you know based off of it so i'm gonna try mixing that and the nordic design language and i think maybe some of these crystals you know i think it could look really cool and perhaps as a canon this is more like a chinese canon but you know i could definitely change the the look of the dragon to become like a killer killer whale you know so yeah uh those are the reference images that i've had from the brainstorming session looks really great and organized unlike mine <laughs> All right, well, okay. before we move on to yours, let's just quickly read out some comments. Kaibak Art also says, may need magic prisoner balls then. Yeah, I mean, that, <laughs> that's something that we can do is like shackle it around. That's true, actually. Like you can design tools, not just used to hunt, but maybe after the hunt, you know, something to contain the creature. That could be cool as well. Yeah, and, but yeah, so if you want to join in, you feel free to design anything that's being used by the hunters so it doesn't have to be the tools used to hunt it can be i don't know even like the bags of the hunter like yeah maybe or maybe like the things that they've crafted out of it you know maybe the furniture from the shop. yeah so yeah go crazy with it you know and evan sanata also says i'm thinking about putting all kinds of its favorite food on a hot plate fully poisoned and it'll die <laughs> without me breaking any sweat lol damn i'm not I'm totally not fit to become a hunter. Dude, that's actually a really smart idea. <laughs> you should do it. Yeah, do it, dude. Yeah. It's just, yeah. Um, probably if you want to put it in a game, you have to sell it on the client that this would be cool, you know. Mm -hmm. But no, yeah, it is a smart idea. Yeah, I mean, so it, it, it doesn't easily become like a, like a lame trap. Make it <laughs> something cool. Yeah. But... It could work if it's for my like a mobile phone game where it's a bit sillier, you know, where maybe. after they eat it on the hot plate, you know, uh, maybe there's like the rope, you know, that suddenly snares around the legs and yeah. <laughs> pulls it up on a tree or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, Evan, I challenge you to submit it next week. Yes. We'll be waiting for your hot pot, hot plate concept. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, should we move on to my mind map then? Uh, well, I guess. I guess we have to. Yeah. Sorry. I prefer not to, but yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yes. Okay. Um, I think we started quite similarly by putting the name of the beast right in the center. Mm -hmm. As big as we can. Uh, and then, as for myself, I usually just uh, think of the properties of this monster or anything related to it really so i just put in underwater fast hot flame hard shell and then from those four keywords i come up with other words that's related to them mm -hmm. so with underwater i'm thinking of diving equipments and what kind of diving equipments that will be needed mm -hmm. uh, thinking maybe like an oxygen tank mat or mask breathing apparatus maybe harpoon gun yeah, so yeah. the the idea with uh, this one, the art direction that I kind of want is something more, a bit more realistic. So not a lot of magic, but uh, 
it's gonna be very uh, functional mm -hmm. fantasy based kind of like witcher dragon age so there's a little bit bit of magic which i think will really help with the difficulty of the brief itself yes yeah i think we did after looking on it or at least when we did the mind map we realized that oh damn this is actually quite a challenging brief to start off with yeah yeah we really didn't expect it to be this challenging when we started yeah but, but yeah anyway so with the f the quickness of the turtle itself uh, i'm thinking of like how, how do the hunters uh, mitigate or like stop the turtles from moving so there may be traps right maybe it's like a net trap or electricity to stun stun mm. the turtles or maybe like a freezing bomb or something like a landmine not mm. landmine sorry sea mines and oh that's hunt, cool that is actually a really cool idea yeah yeah so so the hunters have to uh kind of like scout and like scout the area for where mm. the turtles navigate itself and then set up traps based on like its path or something mm, i see i and see then set up set up traps booby traps and then as with the hard shells i'm thinking it's gonna be like a weapon like a harpoon mm. gun like the har harpoon gun that shoots maybe like a drill or mm. a hammer <laughs> but i think i might omit the idea of a hammer because I'm thinking if it's underwater, then maybe a hammer yeah. won't be too fast. But, but maybe it it's like fast, after the know? turtle goes out of the water, you know, <laughs> they can start just hammering on it. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, and then with the flames, uh, thinking it obviously they need some fire resistant materials. Yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe like a also like a fire resistant gloves or helmet mm. to handle handle but, the heat. So I'm guessing this technology level in your universe is a little bit closer to modern mm. or industrial period, maybe. No, actually, no. I'm I want it to be more um, like fantasy. So I'm I'm actually not sure. I'm not sure how mm. I'm gonna mash it together. But it almost sounds like a dishonored kind of universe, you know. Yeah, yeah, have... that's what I'm thinking actually. Mm. Something along dishonored, so it's not purely fantasy, high fantasy. Right. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be a bit more functional, which mm -hmm. I really like that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, and I really want to try to get my works to be to go in that direction. Right. Right. Okay. That's okay. cool. I mean, it's quite different from mine, I suppose. But that's the fun of it, right? Yeah, Everyone it's... interprets it in a different way. I mean, even in this other, there's some magic, so I, I can still have some leeway. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So okay, so with the references, Ooh, I have the that's messy. tiger sharks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so with the tiger sharks, um, I'm thinking of. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, I think we had the same same idea of uh, googling what the natural predators yeah. are, and we came up with the shark and killer whales. But luckily, I went with the shark. <laughs> Phew. And uh, <laughs> the shark, yeah. And with the shark itself, I can uh, get some shape uh, inspiration. Yeah. And also, not only looking at the, the big picture, but maybe even the microscopic level of what shark is. Oh, so this is like dude. the microscopic detail of a shark scale. So I think it has really awesome shapes that I can oh, yeah, dude. incorporate. It looks like natural the... armor already. Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to be using the parts of the shark and incorporating that into the design language itself. Mm -hmm. And then I'm just looking at references for the harpoons, the harpoon yeah. guns, and right. traps, like turtle traps, and maybe like the oh. underwater helmet or armor thing. How, so some how big are you patterns. imagining this turtle to be, actually? Quite small. It's just a normal turtle. <laughs> oh, okay. Oops. Yeah. Mine is like, you know, I'm thinking of it like human-sized kind of turtle, you know? Oh, uh, really gigantic then. yeah 
Okay. Yeah, uh, you definitely will have a tougher time. Sorry. Hey, I mean, you know, it's the world <laughs> of beast, beast uh, hunter. Yeah. So. And then. You gotta go for the big creatures, man. Huh? Yeah, I, I guess. You gotta go big. Or go home. Oh, and the the last <laughs> reference that I have here is an asbestos. Not sure if I pronounce it right. Yeah. But an asbestos is like a fire resistant uh, mineral. mineral I Man, think. I feel and sorry really for like... your bounty hunters. What? They're gonna get cancer. I know. Oh man. I mean, they're they're dumb. Okay. <laughs> All right. But uh, what I really like, I, I I mean, I'm not gonna be using it directly as like asbestos but I'm gonna be taking the like this, this weaving pattern that I really like and incorporate that into the again with the design mm-hmm. which I think will look really cool yeah yeah so yeah those are my references mm-hmm. and, and that's for the heat welding mask and whatnot maybe yeah, yeah. Mm. all right So, well, should we, we start with the sketch? Yes, okay. we can. Sketches. Yeah, let's start. So I'm going to oh, open it up. And actually, I'm gonna try to move my uh, microphone jack to my front port to see if it can boost the volume. All right, sure. <laughs> Ken is trying to fix his own stuff uh, or audio. I'm going to be soloing this podcast. So I've got my trusty, uh, trusty elliptical brush. Let's see. Let me see. Maybe not fully hard. Yeah, this one should be good actually. So I've got my elliptical brush that's been flattened a bit and I will start off actually by doing the weapons. So here I've set a hammer. So I'm thinking actually uh, maybe making it look quite ferocious as if it's able to smash through very thick very thick shells so I'm just gonna start off with a big silhouette actually so I'm not gonna worry too much about the shapes which I think is often the are the details sorry so I can focus on the big shapes so maybe there's like a big hammer and then on the On the corners of it, there's like sharper teeth that's maybe extracted from the killer whale and attached to the head of the hammer. Oh, that's pretty cool. (laughs) And then then perhaps I can design the shaft. And I'm gonna try and incorporate some of those more Nordic kind of design languages. So I'm going to bring in something like this, you know, oops, a little too big. I'll just shrink that down a bit. And yeah, I think just to be a bit, to make it a little bit more obvious how I'm using my references, I can just bring in these images that I'm specifically looking at. There we go. And try to come up with a cool design all right so go back going back here i'm just going to try bringing in some of these more de- nordic design elements and then maybe, maybe just having a thicker uh, so taking it from this hammer having a thicker handle just to be able to support the heavier head on the top now I'm trying to keep the design a bit grounded, but in this, for the sake of making it look more fearsome, you know, I'm, I could try like making the head a lot bigger. So just trying to figure out a little bit of the interior details. And maybe it is double headed, you know, so I can just flip this here, oopsie. Looks like I have it merged down, so I'm gonna extract this, pull it out, merge these two, and then flip this. Let me read the chat just in case. 
Hello, Stellar Hall and Bima. Great to have you two here. And I guess Ken's still not back. I'm going to... Hey, hey, Ken. Oh, okay. So what's going to be happening? Oh. Alright, so I guess Ken can't. So for those of you that can't hear him, uh, Ken is unable to restart his audio, which is unfortunate. So I guess you guys will have to deal with just hearing my voice for this podcast. Yeah, Ken, if you could also read the chat and respond to them. So I... That would be also really great. Uh... Hmm, I see. Ah, all right. All right, so what I'm going to do now is trying to maybe make it not a hammer, but a morning star-ish kind of weapon. And I can imagine like the teeth, you know, replacing these flanges. So maybe like going a little bit crazier i feel like i've been playing it a bit too safe you know with the with the first one so maybe making it look like teeth or it could be ice you know it could be ice shards perhaps so rather than bending it down i'll just try and replicate some of these shapes that i'm seeing with the one at the bottom just go crazier with, with this with the shapes since it is more organic yeah there we go just give it a try hopefully that will work out and I'll just hint at the middle one just by doing this and then no I can stream it actually let me try Uh, Twitch. Oh, I can do it on uh, what do you call it? I can do it on desktop. I can turn on my desktop audio. Talk. Uh, no, no, no. It's. Just... Oh. Yeah, that's really unfortunate. But yes, the show must go on. So I'm just going to create a few more weapons in the meantime. So maybe adding some more Nordic elements to it, you know, maybe something like this. And, you know, I could always bash these in, but I'm not really, I tend not to like it as much. I'd like to be more in control of my designs and not be as open to happy accidents. I mean, that's just how I work. But if feel free to approach this design brief however way you like. So maybe this could be a tooth, you know. And one more cool reference image that I saw is kind of this like flail. So maybe those can be replaced with ice or mornings. I mean teeth. <laughs> yeah, level 70 legendary. So it's like increasing in terms of the uh, epicness of the weapons. And I normally don't have my references I uh, up on my Photoshop. I actually keep it on pure ref. It's just that uh, I think for the sake of keeping it a bit easier and for everyone to see what I'm looking at, I'm just going to be bringing the reference up here. <sighs> yeah, I mean, it's really annoying that yeah, it's happening, Ken. Yeah, it's okay. Maybe it's got to do with, twi uh, not Twitch, but Discord as well, because they sometimes mess around with the audio jack as well. Like they detect and then they replace, and then, I don't know, 
feel free to mess around with it, I guess. But yeah, for those of you that don't know, I'm actually in a Discord call with Ken. That's how we're able to hear each other. Hmm. Uh, no, I don't want to repeat the same solution. I think what would be cool, uh, sorry, is to have teeth. You know, killer whale teeth. So I'll probably Google that up and see how that looks like. Just so I'm not kind of faking it. And they look kind of boring. <sighs> oh well, it's not that great. But let's just offer it up as an option. Maybe making it bigger. Okay. Alright. So what, what Ken will be doing is that he'll be restarting his computer for a while and soloing me. Oof, that's quite cool actually. Although, uh, yeah, it's a bit more of a tamer idea, I would say, having the teeth. I would prefer it personally to be ice. I think that's the, the one where it feels like it's a direct counter. And let's see how that mace looks like. All right. So it's a bunch of chains, and there's the heavier. Um, wait. Okay, so there's a spike on top here. So for those of you following as well, I mean, how's your piece coming along? I'm quite interested to hear how that's going. And hopefully some of you are. I think it'll be really cool just to see what you all can come up with. So chain and then yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll resolve the design of it a bit later on but let's just say that I'm creating. I'm using this rope as a placeholder. Since I'm just going for quick ideas right now, I'm not focusing on details as you can see. Just giving enough of a range that when the client looks at it, they'll be able to recognize. I mean, they'll be able to uh, have a bunch of different ones because you really wouldn't want to spend too much time on one option that, or one direction that the client ends up shooting down, you know. All right. Um, I think this will just about be it for the, these kinds of melee weapons. I don't really want to spend too much. I'll just refine the silhouette a bit. Like after I have the big shapes, I can always uh, focus a little bit more on the smaller details. But once again, I won't do that for too long since, yeah, we do have a short we're on a short leash here on the drawing table podcast to try and do as many options as we can within one hour and of course if you're working with a client you will get to have a lot more time um and as for stellar how to answer your question we're not designing weapons if you uh, what we're doing is actually designing based on a brief that we have prepared and we can design any of the tools and I will quickly link that to you actually. Link the brief to you. So if you want to follow along, please do. All right, I think that goes about it for the option. I will yeah, work on it a little bit more later. But yeah, the base idea is there. Maybe just a tiny bit. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, it's some, sometimes I do feel like messing around a little bit on some ideas before really moving on. Maybe just replacing it with chain or at least a yeah, little hint of what a chain could look like. The rest can definitely be done with details later on. And maybe actually the, yeah, it could be a shape more like a killer whale head hmm nah that looks kind of funny actually it could just be killer whales teeth here i think that would just make a lot more sense and we'll define refine the interior details some other time 
Uh, no worries. Uh, stellar Hall. Whew. All right. So one of the ideas that I had earlier, like I said, was to create weapons. So maybe creating a shield, you know, uh, maybe a shield has been created from the from the remnants of previously slain turtle. So I'll put this in a folder, call it weapons, just so it's nice and organized, which I think is very important when you are working, especially for a client and when they request for your PSDs. The last thing you want them to do is come back to you asking for you to fix it up. That is really, an, yeah frustrating but to be fair i guess it's more annoying for the client all right so the idea is that maybe i have a turtle shell and it's been used to create a long shield of sorts where you know it kind of reaches the floor and i think it could make for a very effective defense so i'm just going to create the shape the base shape first and rather than just following this boring turtle shell design I'm going to just embellish it a bit, imagining how maybe the turtle could look like. And since it is fighting with a clan of North Nordic warriors, I do want it to look a bit more fearsome, you know. So I'm just designing the outer silhouette a little bit more and then coloring it in. Or just filling in a little bit. There we go. Let me just check. All right, so the chat seems to be a bit quiet. You know, feel free to up update everyone on how your designs are going as well. I think it'll be really cool just to tell everyone how that's coming along. And I mean, I personally I would be really interested in seeing that later on. All right, I mean, I could use the symmetry tool here, but I guess I'm a bit stubborn that way. I mean, how do you guys usually start off like a brief, you know, if you get it from a client? Do you start off with a mind map as well? Or perhaps you yeah, just go straight into the designs. I'm curious to know actually. So this is the base shape and I'm just going to take the erase tool and then add in that bump in the middle, which is used to reflect sword blows if I, if I recall correctly. So I could have that in the center and then some other patterns which could be carved into it you know so maybe there's like a reinforce reinforcement around around the circumference of the shell just so it looks a little bit more solid and perhaps in the long run doesn't do too much but yeah there we go so maybe then they carve directly into the shell, you know. Maybe I can change brushes just so that I can get a little bit of that opacity going. Yeah, there we go. So I'm kind of, you know, taking quite heavy inspiration from this reference that I have. There we go. Ah, man. I mean, maybe I'll bring in more proper looking Nordic design. I mean, even this this reference image, you know, that I had up here, I could just apply it back onto the shield. I think that's quite cool. And I don't even have to zoom in because even just the silhouette of the shapes itself is already inspiring enough, in my opinion. Let me just check the chat as well. All right, still quite quiet, that's fine. You can still ramble on for a while. But yeah, if you guys have any questions as well, do let me know. Mm, let's see. Yeah, it's getting a bit... Mm, a bit complicated. Maybe from afar, from afar, the silhouette hasn't changed. But I think sometimes when the silhouette is kept quite simple, it's one of those opportunities for you to go a bit crazier with the interior details. But once again, just don't spend too much time with it from the get-go. That's not what I recommend. So maybe there's runes outside as well, like Norse carvings. So that'll be cool. And maybe some extra reinforcements. Just metal work that's kind of spilling out, you know. I think that's fine. All 
and hopefully Ken comes back soon. There we go. Yeah, I'll just keep this option as just one. Alright, so maybe one other thing I can move on to is the potions, for example. Since we're supposed to... Ooh, and even this thing, you know. Ooh, that's exactly the same reference image. This thing looks so cool. I have no idea what it is, but it's definitely like an Art Nouveau looking thing. And, you know, it's something that I could try and integrate into my piece as well. So it has like extra metal reinforcements on, on top. Hmm, I don't know if it's something that I need to do actually. <laughs> and I don't want to overdo it, definitely. So I'm just going to carve the silhouette a bit just to refine it a bit more. Maybe a few stray bits kind of flying around. I wouldn't. Hey Ken, well Ken's back on Discord. Hopefully he can jump on. What do you call it? Uh, yeah, the Prism Light Stream as well soon. I can hear you, by the way, Ken. All right. All right. And I'm also just gonna turn off all of my other reference images so it doesn't get too crowded so i'm gonna call this folder shield <laughs> sorry guys a bit of an itchy nose today <laughs> more like any other day i suppose so i'm putting my shield way up there and as you can see i'm kind of designing an orthographic view kind of like face to uh facing straight to the viewer and because i'm not trying to complicate it for myself at this point you know you're free to design things in perspective from the get-go if you want but i tend to find that it helps to start as simple as you can so this is one concept that i've been really looking forward to trying out which is the canon so i am going to try to compile all the references that i've had before and putting it in and then showing you guys how I will synthesize all of these images. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Simple jibs, man. As the great Eduardo Peña would say, it's all about the jibs. Just in case you guys think I'm mocking him, I, I'm not. I highly respect him as, as an artist. So if he's somehow watching this, or someone that knows him is watching this, you know. <laughs> Hi. Alright, so I'm going to actually uh, start designing the cannon. So once again, simple. Uh, side view and oh one thing I almost forgot was bringing this crucial piece of reference image which is the killer whale itself so I am going to try and integrate some of those jabes so maybe oh let me find a killer whale with its mouth open because I have no idea how to draw it otherwise I'm not very skillful at animal anatomy Oh no, are you able to unsolo? Let me turn off the solo. I'll turn off the solo. Let's... Hmm, yeah, that is really strange. Let's give it another try. I mean, just try and mess around with it as well, Ken. Don't worry, I'll hold the fort when, when you're gone. Yeah. You can just talk to us, Ken. If they can hear you. Can everyone hear Ken, by the way? I'm just curious. Mm. 
Mm. If it is, then can can just be an invisible talking head. So I'm just going to. Oh man. So, oh no. Yeah, sorry about this, guys. We really didn't expect this to happen at all. It it just seems that sometimes with every podcast episode, there's something that happens on the technical side of things. But yeah, we will eventually resolve it one day. But yeah, these killer whales' heads are really strange. I'm. I don't think mine does look anything like it. S looks more like a dolphin, actually. So I'm just gonna pull this up and then maybe flip it around so it matches. There we go. Oh no, it looks so strange. It, it looked better in my head, I swear. <laughs> Looks so derpy. <laughs> oh god, no. It looks really. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> yes, I'm communicating with Ken in the great beyond. Blessings of the nine. Um, yeah, this is sometimes what happens, guys, is that, you know, there's just some designs that always look better in your head. And then when you're trying it out, it looks weird. So this is where I might cheat a little bit. Where I'm gonna superimpose the head. Yeah, oh, there we go. <laughs> I don't have to be so stubborn. And that's the thing with concept art, you know, you don't always have to do things like the, you know, the honest... Oh. I wouldn't say this is dishonest, but you don't have to do it pure. Let's put it that way. Do things pure. Uh, so I'll just do this. All right, there we go. Maybe have the head above. Where's the eye anyways? Or oh, whatever the case is. Which what it still looks so weird, but I'll just go go along with it, okay? Even if it's a bad idea, I'll, I still. Oh, it looks so bad. <laughs> um. I'm gonna start drawing then to catch up with Jordan, who's gone ahead of me. Yeah, I think I might give up on this cannon idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to make it look like a killer whale. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be. Even <laughs> I could just add wins <laughs> to it. Mm. So, there we go. is any of the people in the chat doing their stuff right now? Or. Yeah. I don't know, maybe doing their mind maps. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> yeah. All right, I'm keeping this as an option. Uh, <laughs> lagging, I'm not sure, Stellar Hull. I'm not sure what you mean by lagging. I think I'll just... I'm gonna start by designing the weapon first, which is the harpoon gun. Mm -hmm. All right. And I, th I see that you're going with a hammer or mace. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the ones that I was thinking about. Are you gonna be using that underwater? I mean, the, no. the, be uh, the, the beast hunters, not you. No, I mean, no, I don't, none of it will be used underwater. Okay. So it's just gonna be used to beat beat up the turtle outside of yes. the water. Yes. I so see. I'm just gonna be. Uh, I'm just gonna be creating the potion after this. 
So I'm just going to um, quickly create one more. So I'm going to create the potion. Uh, for Stellar Hull, maybe you can try uh, lowering down the, uh, the quality of the stream to 360p or 480p, depending on your connection. I mean, how is it for everyone else? Should be okay. Ah, thanks for letting us know, Taya. And good to see you on the stream again. So I am just going to be working on the potion design. And I've collected some very cool Norse pottery. And also some other patterns, which I can base the design on. And I had the idea that, you know, perhaps it's something that they could use as a fire resist potion or something, filling it with all of these other cool things, with frost on it. Strange. Taste. There, there we go. I'm just going to shrink these down. Why don't you take us through what you're thinking right now? Okay. Yeah, uh, let's see. I'm trying to get the shape of the, incorporate the shape of the shark into this harpoon gun. Mm -hmm. And I really like the idea of it shooting like a spiraling, uh, a spiraling harpoon. So it pierces through this, the hard shell. Mm, I, see. I, it, uh, I think with the addition of the spinning uh, harpoon gun, uh, harpoon, what do you call it? The harpoon, I guess. The harpoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It adds it adds stopping power, which mm. helps penetrate hard shells. If it's like a regular harpoon, then I think it's just gonna bounce off. So the idea is to make it have like a better stopping power. And maybe some, and, and looking at the teeth of sharks, it has that kind of serrate, serrated edges, which mm -hmm. would be really cool. Uh, so the, it won't come out of the, like when it plucks itself into the turtle, it won't come off as easily. Mm, so I'm going to try to incorporate that into the design. Mm. Not sure. Oh man, it's been a while since I designed weapons. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> looks it's been a while too. <laughs> this looks so lame. It's alright. But we'll get to it. We'll warm up. And yeah, it takes a while to get into some of the better designs too. So I don't think if you are also creating your own designs in general, don't, don't fret if your earlier designs kind of look like rubbish because kind of will be the case most of the time where your first few ideas will not be the best. So yeah, um, try and have fun with it. I mean, I'm trying to remind myself of that too because I can often get discouraged if the designs don't go quite as well as I want them to. The, yeah, definitely. I think <laughs> that's like one of the hardest thing about design in my opinion is to keep yourself encourage <laughs> in a way yeah <laughs> like uh, when you keep yeah i mean when you keep not hitting the the image that's in your mind then it just kind of makes you feel a bit down you know mm -hmm. I but i think as long as you keep iterating and, and iterating and not stop i think mm -hmm. you'll get there oh yeah so yeah, really wanna. I think I should have done like a study of a harpoon gun, cause <laughs> that that will really help in making me not guess like what the structure or, or anatomy of a harpoon gun is. Like yeah, I mean you can always kind of like take it. Different. Yeah. Yeah. Really like the shape of this reference here, like really elongated barrel i might steal that actually oh i have an idea maybe there maybe 
the head of this potion can have uh, the head of a dragon, so it looks like a flame laser's body. Huh. I don't know. Not the most practical, but hey. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. I'm gonna try to make the handle look like the fear fin. Mm -hmm. That would look cool. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, sure. I mean, let's give it a try. Yeah. And Tay also says, yeah, so relatable. I get scared to even draw a single line after constant failure. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's It can be difficult, but I do think that, you know, take breaks if you re uh, really are feeling that way and come back to it. And more, more likely than not, you'll come up with fresher solutions than you would have if you just, you know, hard-headedly tried to push through the problem. So I'm gonna try, um, let's see, what makes something look more Nordic? I think it's the chunky shapes in Nordic. So I'm gonna try to make these handles a little less, what do you call it, a little less Maybe the patterns as well. Yeah. yeah. Like the Celtic like patterns. Yeah. Should be fine actually. Um, what I'll probably do is you know, maybe extend this down as well. Just so it doesn't pinch too soon. I think it makes the shape look a bit more unique. And then some of the other patterning later. Uh, that will make it very convenient to use, I think. Yeah, it's all right. I'll, I'll figure out the details later, but I think as a base idea, these should work quite okay. So what I'm gonna do is just go back to one of my previous designs, lower down the opacity, and go over, the de go over it, you know. So this is where I start worrying about the details, or at least more about focusing on the details. So maybe this is the stage that I can try to bring in some killer whale elements into <laughs> it again. I'm traumatized, Ken. So I, th I think I missed that uh, when I was trying to fix my stuff. So, so you said that this is where you start to bring in like the details of the killer whales or incorporating the designs of killer whales into it. The hammer. I would right? like to. I wanted but, to do it to the cannon, but it didn't look like a cannon. <laughs> no, but I, I mean, with the hammer, do you usually yeah. work work that way? So you started with the like the big picture of like the overall silhouette first, and then add the maybe patterns of the oh, animals yeah. later. Of course. Okay. Uh, I mean, it just. Otherwise, if I focus on the details too early, I'm forgetting about that basic idea itself. Mm. And I don't want that happening. And I think this is one of those cases where, yeah. Uh, I think the killer whale isn't super distinct in terms of the shape, I guess, or at least the motifs in itself. Yeah, mm, I'm, I'm, I mean, if, if you just make it black and white, <laughs> it may look yeah. like cows. Yeah, but that's the thing, like what I'm trying to do here is that if you look at the silhouette of the killer whale, the underbelly is quite fat. I mean, I, I don't know where that picture went, I think it's under a cannon. Yeah, the it's underbelly like a of, of a killer whale is kind of fat, so I'm trying to bring some of that fatness back into the hammer. Mm. Or, I could make it like this, but it just looks a bit silly. I'll be honest, like, um, I thought that it would work a lot better in my head, but you know, that's the thing as well with designs is that you, know, you have to try it out sometimes to really realize that they're not working. So, yeah, what about you, Ken? How's your stuff going? Uh, I'm finding a Finding it really hard to come up with like a cool shape. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to incorporate more of the shark um, design language or shape language. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, 
We'll see, we'll see. It's actually really tough. I'm, I might just focus. Like right now, I'm just focusing on the overall silhouette at first. Mm -hmm. I really want to get that sleek line of a shark. Yeah. Into the design. But uh, not making it too much that it looks unusable. Mm, yeah. So it's really, really tough to find the balance between, oh, yeah. between that, like making it look sleek and cool, but look functional as well. Yeah, no, I agree with that, Ken. Mm. Yeah, I want to make the shapes a little different. Mm, really like this one opening. So yeah, guys, I mean, we came into this brief also not fully expecting, I mean, not knowing what to expect, really, since we wanted to keep it as honest with you all as possible in terms of our design process. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people sometimes hide their failures, and, and we wanted to try things a little differently on this podcast where we're being more honest with that. So hopefully you guys will get something out of it as well. Maybe see how we kind of deal with those failures too. Mm -hmm, definitely. So yeah, and if you guys are struggling with your designs, you can post it on the chat or ask questions about it. Yeah. Did any of the people on, people on the chat ask question to you just now, Jordan? Mm, no. No, it's been a quiet day today, which is fine. I mean, I understand yeah. that not all of the podcasts will be very... And not all of the podcasts will be as crowded. Hmm. And this is fine with me. Well, I'm just really glad that there's people, there's still people watching. The, to all of you that are out there in the chat right now, we really appreciate it. Kind of like that shape. So I I really wonder how, since you're designing hammers, right? How how like what's in your imagination? Like how are they gonna use the hammer in hunting the beast? Or maybe it's not a tool to hunt the beast. What is it used for? Well, I think it is when they manage to incapacitate incapacitate the beast. What I actually had initially in mind was that they hunted the whales. I mean, whales, good lord. Uh, the turtles. <laughs> the turtle, and then with the nets and the cannons, and after capturing the turtle, they can bring it on shore to, I guess, beat them up. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I don't think I really thought that through. That I'm gonna call really Pita. Cool. Yeah. I, I think they might copy copy strike this video. <laughs> Maybe it's these okay. curved shapes that make it feel a little bit more snorted. So I'm gonna convert that into something that's a bit more uh, edged. liking this shape what do you think <laughs> my sketch is getting bigger better. i think it's getting there i mean it feels like it lends itself closer to like an art nouveau kind of weapon yeah and tay also says and we appreciate you streaming guys it's so cool to see your process i'm very happy to hear that and it's our pleasure and as long as you all are getting something from it one way or another i think it's awesome that's all we could really ask for Oh, for some reason I, my chat is not updating. Like I couldn't see the message you uh, you said just now. Oh, um, I refresh it then, Ken. That's really weird. Mm -hmm. I'm so really sorry for all the technical problems today. It's, at least I got my micro uh, microphone better. 
at a better yeah. state now. Yeah, it's fine. It happens, you know. I really still wonder how I can integrate like the look of a killer whale. Mm. Uh. <laughs> what are you drawing, Jordan? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help I can't help myself. Whatever. I'm just going to draw semi vague. What is what does a killer whale look like? I mean I can like I can draw the head and then like fins. I mean but that's not like very killer whale y, you know. Whatever. You know what? I'm just gonna leave it here right now and I'll come back to it later. I'm not gonna dwell on that. Evan said, you keep making that shape. I know. Uh, it's, it's just habits, man, from drawing so many of them. <laughs> Is that a confession? Yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm not afraid <laughs> to confess. Actually, hmm. I wonder if I can get that shark mouth as an opening for the harpoon gun mm. all right there we go and this helps to resolve some transitions because i'm thinking that this is a cylindrical shape from the front uh, there we go i think that makes more sense i'm trying to get that negative space in to make it look a bit more like a All right, I mean, that's first half of the weapon, and I'll probably just jazz up some of the details. So some of the simpler details I can do is definitely carvings. I mean, that's the thing. If I was designing a dragon, you know, I could always design, like, the scales. But, ah, the killer whales are so damn plain. <laughs> I think I might use the microscopic scale. Um, not microscope, but electronic microscope yeah. uh, image of the scales just to see w where I can go with it mm -hmm. I'm just gonna take a part of it and then destroy it see what cool things can come out of it design soon so I think we to... might have to move on to the next segment which is the Q&A really soon yeah, yeah. well to be fair you c we can even do it now like if any yeah. of you have questions like please let us know um, you know it's been quite a quiet chat today so you know <laughs> now is would be the chance to liven that up a little bit you know yeah. So I'm adding, trying to add some of that Nordic pattern here. Yeah, I guess it's starting to feel a bit more Nordic. Sometimes it could just be a matter of the details. It's okay. I mean, it's not bad. Alright, moving on to the next one. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> and thanks, Wimpy Bunny. Crazy. Alright, so I'm going to now create the ice shard mace. So maybe it's like created from the enchanted ice that's found throughout, throughout the continent that they're living on. So I'm going for a rather easy, fantastical solution. I just can't help myself. It's so cute. Uh, that's cheating. What? What's wrong? <laughs> no, I'm just joking. You're cheating. You're yeah. the one that took the tiger sharp while I'm left with the, ah, with the killer whale. 
which yeah. it, I never realized was so oddly phallic. <laughs> oh, maybe it's like a two-handed. Is this two-handed? Oh. <laughs> what uh, are you talking about, Ken? No, no, I'm talking about this crossbow. Maybe it's... Oh, this is the butt. The stock of the crossbow. Uh, right. Yeah. Maybe I can use that. Maybe to it's like fair, a high... Ken, high like, hmm? Oh, I was just saying, to be fair, you're choosing a pretty challenging design. Yeah. Hmm. Let's see, I'm trying to find... For those that do, like I said, I'm looking at my pure ref board actually. And if you still have not used that, you are missing out. I don't feel like I'm missing out. Well, look at how messy your reference boards are. It's messy, but it's really usable for me. I see. Okay. Well, whatever. It suits you, man. Blessings of the Nine says, I think the smoother shapes definitely help with the shark or aquatic look. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, right now, I'm just trying out different ideas because that's what concepting is, right? Just trying out ideas, no. see what works, see what doesn't. Um, I guess you're not a concept artist, Jordan. Why are you even on this podcast? Because I know what real concept art is. <laughs> what is that? Spiky mountains. I see. And stick salesmen. <laughs> kind of like that, actually. Hmm. Alright, it's spiky. I see this. Right. Yeah. I, do you guys have any questions? anything it doesn't have to be uh related to the sorry to the design if you guys have any random thoughts it's also fine please oh we're desperate for questions <laughs> i mean we really want this uh like the setting to be kind of like a like a conversation around the table so we're yeah. just chatting. It's a casual conversation. Yeah. No pressure. Yeah, if you just want to listen to us talk, that's cool. That's cool. Cool, cool. So maybe oh, it's um, pretty good. We can have metal reinforcements coming up. Inkwell artist ask, what would you do differently? What would you do differently now if you were on some sort of time restraint? Well, we are on a time restraint actually. I, in fact, much more strict than we would if we're working for a client. Yeah. But if your question is maybe a sh longer time restraint, I'd actually maybe go back and do some more research because I realize that sometimes the reference images that I'm using are not thorough enough, but I don't want to you know, bore you guys with, uh, with that. What about you, Ken? Uh, yeah, um, we are on a very strict time restraint. We're trying to finish at least one two <laughs> before the podcast ends yeah yeah because usually we uh, during a regular work hour day we have like six to eight hours to come up with several sketches you know but this mm -hmm. time we only have like an hour and a half uh, an hour or less yeah that's why 
and blessings of the nine as as well or at least comment jordan i might have missed it but is your approach to these design more tribal looking uh no it's not that tribal looking it's more more of a nordic kind of style so uh yeah metal work mixed with some magic like maybe ice shards from a glacier and hey, I also asked, I'm really interested in getting to know more about Adam Hawk. What's the studio spirit like? Do you guys do some cool trips to for reference searching or play games together during breaks? Yeah, I would say so. I think it's a studio environment that's very, um, where a lot of people do a lot of activities outside of uh, work hours and during lunch as well. Like we, we have a games room where during lunchtime, some people play games, and I think some people just got Sekiro yesterday, and we're already starting to play it. Damn it! So that's no, sp yeah. no spoilers. I I haven't been watching. I do my own thing. Uh, but overall, yeah, uh, I think there's just a lot of people that have been very enthusiastic and hosting their own events and doing other stuff. So it's a really great studio environment. I think when it. Uh, that really knows how to work hard and play hard. And I, I, I'm, I don't work there. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I knew that. Uh, yeah, and you play ping pong during during your lunch break, right? I did not anymore. It somehow stopped. So I might kick that back up. So maybe just to illustrate. Uh, how I would progress uh, after doing the quick line work is that I would actually do a mask over it. Hello, TCK. Hey, you're back. And you managed to come back in one piece. Where did you go? Or where did he go, Jordan? He was having driving test. Oh. Or not test, right. uh, no. Uh, You should have one too, Jordan. Uh, <laughs> I teach driving. <laughs> oh, uh, and we should actually move on very soon to the other sections. Yeah. And we. And yeah, we didn't get as far as we wanted to, but it, we still will uh, continue actually working on this after after the podcast is finished, so we'll at least try and finish one, you know? Mm -hmm. And we'll be posting that, or showing that uh, on our social medias, so please follow them if you wanna see the final results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, comment and subscribe. All right, so uh, I'm just doing a quick mask and usually I just do like a quick value pass as well or sometimes go straight into color, but I've been trying out doing values first recently and it has been working quite well. So I'm just doing like a dodge on the color layer. So yeah, that's my first weapon. So it's trying to incorporate nice. some Nordic themes and then having the teeth of the killer whale lining the corners or at least the circumference of the hammer looks pretty good thanks looks like Bad. it's gonna hurt it's gonna kill the turtle <laughs> yeah i don't think that they're really concerned with <laughs> keeping it in one piece and wimpy bunny asked as well so this will probably be the last question before we move on to a different segment is how did you guys know each other did you guys meet at some studio or have you been friends since a long time? Can you wanna answer that? Answer that? <laughs> I just answer. I just answer another question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think we explained this a few episodes back, but let's tell the tale again. Okay, Ken, you're, you go. We're twins. That's it. Uh, oh, right. <laughs> yeah. We've known each other since birth. Since. <laughs> No, okay, okay, seriously. So, uh, we first met when we were studying studying at MZD. 
studying at MCD in Singapore. But the funny thing is that um, actually Jordan is a good childhood friend of my wife's brother when they were living in Singapore. So, oh, sorry, the tap just crashed. That's weird. But yeah, so it's a happy coincidence. But yeah, we first met at FZD and then we found that we have similar thought processes about art and the mindset as well. So mm -hmm. that's how we beca became best buds. Mm -hmm. And we've just been collaborating ever since. And yeah. the podcast was just a natural progression from that, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, it's been great fun. Hope that answers your question. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's actually move on to the next se section. <laughs> session. Let, me, the le next le section. let me finish this one, this one last sketch. Okay, I mean, I guess I'll tell people what I'm doing now. So I'm kind of just introducing some color using a multiply on top of the value. I think multiply, since it's additive by nature, it really doesn't destroy your colors too much. And the good thing is I can always adjust what's underneath it with like levels, you know, to try and get the values looking okay. Mm. Yeah, so that's what I would do. And then I can always now take the time to change the colors of the smaller areas. So the key. Now what could be kind of cool is that if they're making ice made out of ice, iced tea. Mm. Hey, it's a nice color pop. For some reason, my weapons are looking more fantasy. Uh, like becoming more and more fantasy with each iteration. That's fine. Just embrace. Yeah, I mean, it's embrace. not for it's not for a real client, so. We'll just go with whatever the flow is going. Yeah. So, ooh, this is quite cool. If the weapon is ter uh, is like made of this kind of icy material. Yeah. Anyway. So let's recap, maybe. Okay. Let's do a quick recap, Arena. And then All we right. can move on to the next one. Yes. So. Just to recap as well, I've been doing like a Nordic influence, like uh, or like a theme of ice Nordic clan, where they hunt the turtles with their ice magic infused weapons. So I've been trying to play around with those shapes and trying to incorporate a killer whale motif into it very unsuccessfully, as some people have seen. And yeah, there's other weapons as well. So I made like a mace from it, and like a morning star, and then a turtle shell that's been created into a shield. <laughs> 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 and my cannon whale, the most uh, yeah, <laughs> potent weapon of them all. And a fire resist potion. So yes. Okay. So as for me, Initial, oh my initial sketch looks really bad. <laughs> looks so shit. <laughs> it's all right, Ken. But yeah, um, yeah. I think that's also a process of concept. Like the initial ones are usually your, your warm ups, you know. But yeah. in this case, like I try to incorporate more and more of the features of a shark. And then maybe like the flow lines or something uh, like I really like this flow right here. So mm. I'm trying to get that into this shape here. And then when that kind of didn't really work out as like I didn't didn't make it look as cool as I wanted it, wanted it to started trying to get some inspiration from like the close ups of the scale. Yeah and just messing with it like actually copying it and then stretching it and then just yeah uh, destroying this the silhouette and then combining it again with other parts of maybe the like the this crossbow here to come up with this design and then as with this design 
I tried just just to experiment. I tried flipping the image of a shark and then putting it on darken, mm-hmm. and yeah. then just to get some interesting ideas of um, just interesting yeah. ideas really. Yeah, 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 and then yeah, and then messing around with the shape as well. Yeah, and yeah, that's 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 it. I, I would say that four is actually the one that stands out to, to me. It feels the most aggressive, and three has a yeah. lot of potential too. Yeah, I, I really that. like three and four. Yeah, might combine those two in some way later. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes for some of these weapons, they don't have the uh, they they're a little bit more difficult to deviate from. I think unless you go super crazy, like mm. you know. And I think I kind of had it a bit easier trying to design with like fantasy weapons. You what? 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 I think I had it a bit easier trying to design with like fantasy weapons rather than. Yeah, I should have gone with something like that. Yeah, and that's that's, that's fine. also perhaps a lesson as well. It's that you know, in a time restriction, sometimes it's easier to go for a simpler design rather than trying to come up with the most original. Um, and just to also build upon what Tom uh, or TCK has been saying in the chat in response to Evan's question, those are really cool. How do you make cool shapes? And that's definitely yeah, tricky question to answer as mentioned by TCK. And I would agree with what he says, like thinking about the big, medium and small shapes. And yeah, also thinking about the flow of the edge. But I would also say that a shape should be recognizable and Mm-hmm. It communicates the intended purpose or the function of the design from the r- initial read. Oh yeah, for sure. So, so yeah, the mood, the feeling, most of it should be able to be communicated just from the silhouette view itself. That's what and it I would like <sighs> to just add on to what TCK has been saying. Mm. And I think it, uh, sometimes it also it's useful to think in terms of the functions first like what is it used for and then start to build up the design around the function yeah but i guess in in like spaces like mobile games or very fantasy uh, art direction it's fine to go with like something cool and then bringing back the function into the cool shape so you can go both ways in depending on the situation yeah definitely all right so that would wrap up the q a and to move on to the next segment so we will be moving on to the artwork of the week a segment where we share some artwork that have left an impression on us throughout the week pretty straightforward mm-hmm. i'd say mm-hmm. do you want to go uh, first sure let me open it up boom 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 <laughs> boom boom boom. <laughs> boom boom boom. Get that. All right. So let me just save up my other works, so that. Oh, and we will be posting up the images once we're done with it. Even the reference sheet. So if you guys want to have a look at that, so don't worry. All right. So first artwork that really left an impression on me was this one. It's not from this week actually, but from last week, and it's. Deserted Solar Harvesters by Marco Gourlay. And you know, I think it's just a very strongly executed piece. I actually really like the mood of this piece, not only just of because of the majesty of these structures that are you know shooting up into uh, the sky, but the fact that it there's an air of mystery around it, even despite the fact that it is in a bright area. Know, just the fact that these structures almost look monolithic and almost feel like they're from an outside world, you know. And, it's, <laughs> and then you really begin to wonder what happened to them. And yeah, I think that mood was conveyed really well, not to mention the technical execution. Mwah, very juicy. Very <laughs> juicy mood. Blessings of the Nine says, yes. such an honor. <laughs> Yes, it's in case you guys haven't figured out <laughs> that is Marco. So yeah, 
be sure to give him some love following him on his art station at MV Gorle. You definitely will not regret it. And this is something that you guys probably have seen as well uh, recently, which is uh, some of the Anthem concept art. I personally haven't played it, and I've heard that it's not that great of a game, but the concept art definitely, I think, is, is really impressive. I, I think it's great how you know, he really has managed to make it feel quite loose, but at the same time finished in terms of the mood. Like if I looked at it from afar, I really wouldn't question it so much. Uh, whether the photos have been integrated <coughs> very smoothly or not, and yeah, I I have admiration for people that are able to capture this kind of mood even while keeping it quite rough. And this is just one of the few that have impressed me. And this one is specifically done by Ken Fairclough, and it's called Stronghold Waterfall. Mm. So be sure to follow him on his art station at Ken Fairclough, or, or however you pronounce it. So sorry if I butchered it. It's really hard to find, not find, but it's really hard to um, know when to stop uh, with the rendering because yeah. you, you know it, it. It looks really fine from afar, right? Like his piece, mm -hmm. but when you zoom in, you can still see like the <laughs> like the artifacts of the JPEGs or things like that. But when zoomed out, it just works perfectly. So it. Oh, like what do you think about that oh yeah for sure i think that's something i really need to work on too because i just get too mm, paranoid as if you know people will nitpick my piece for yeah, not yeah. Being integrated properly but i think this is something i really need to work towards in the future mm. do you think on, huh? sorry, sorry. Do, do you think it also depends on the client then like since yes that's true yeah. actually since this is more of a concept, I don't think they're looking for something super polished. But if it was an, you know, illustration or splash art or a matte painting, of course, you really have to be very tight with it. Mm. But yeah, it's it's cool that there's some studios out there that find this sufficient. You know. And moving on to the last one, and of course, I'm a big fan of Anton Fadi and one of the images he's posted recently. Ah, I just think it's so great, ah, and I. I think one of the best things that he does is communicating a sense of scale mm. and to do it with such efficiency. He doesn't over tend to overdo his rendering, yet it still looks finished. And he's mm. very graphic with his shapes as well. And he's very, you know, he's not afraid to just keep it simple. Mm -hmm. And yet, of course, it still looks finished as a great it just makes me feel like I want to go into this kind of world. Like I can feel the atmosphere around me. Mm. Yeah, it looks really nice. You should. Yeah. You guys should definitely check out his profile. Yeah, uh, I've been a fan of his for quite a while now, and his art station is Shant. So yeah, be sure to follow that, and I will let Ken show his artwork of the week. Okay, so the first one is from Daniel Romanovsky, and it's called Foggy Down. And what I really like about this painting is the story that it tells. It has this sense of mystery to it, and a mystery and wonder to it because I don't really like okay. this. Yeah, uh, really like. I mean, it's such a simple concept like giant octopus being boiled, but with the mood that with the mood that he constructs like the color palette that he picks and even like the oriental uh, nature of the environment like, I, I can see this being in like from vietnam's the references <laughs> that he got right like oh man so it looks like they're having the best hot pot and steamboat party of their life yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's just kind of rare to see this kind of environment and then with this kind of story you know yeah. so i just find it quite inspiring like to see this mishmash of culture yeah know. oh man i wish i could be there you know yeah. well, and the monkeys <laughs> i think that's something he puts into his images quite often yeah and his art station is form language uh, please follow him he's got really awesome mm -hmm. works as well and then my second one, I only have two. 
the second one is V. Uh, it's a really weird title, but there it is. It's by Sina Abasnia. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, so I'm really sorry if I butchered his or her name. And the art station is Sina1993, so I'm guessing that he's born in 1993. Nope, That's, this just means he's the 1993rd <laughs> Sina in the world. Probably, that, that could work too. And yeah, what I really love about this one is the mood, the sense of scale, and just the atmosphere that really oozes from the background, you know? Like, I really like how dark, not dark, but like it's really moody in the back, but, and then mm. the foreground is hit by this somewhat golden light, and it creates this really nice contrast and mm. sense of wonder in this image yeah. and everything else is quite everything is, else is quite loose so i really also really like that kind of image that has loose brush strokes because i think it creates this sense of movement as well so mm -hmm. yeah that's it for my artwork of the week awesome it's the link for this ended. one let it's me try to that find we both it. Link, linked similar wild moods where it's like epic environments. Yeah. I think um, there's a certain uh, a certain attraction to this kind of paintings, right? Cert uh, this kind of image. Mm. Yeah, it makes me actually want to do something like this. I'm I'm I've been building up to that with my personal pieces, so I'm yeah excited to eventually get to something like this. Mm -hmm. And okay. Definitely be studying Anton Kadi's piece, and yeah. So I think that wraps up today's podcast, and we really do apologize for the technical difficulties. Uh, but regardless, I hope that you guys have enjoyed it uh, by seeing the process that we have put up on screen, and that you guys have also been following along with it as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, thank you so much guys for joining us today at the drawing table podcast we really hope that you enjoyed it and to stay updated on future contents please follow us on our instagram and facebook and also twitch and if you're interested in watching other episodes or vod's be sure to subscribe to us on youtube also leave us a comment on what you thought of the show and because we gre greatly appreciate any feedback and we really love hearing from you guys as well. Yes, definitely. And you can see the links to the to our social media on the screen, on my screen right now. Mm -hmm. And please, if you have designed something, tag us uh, with the hashtag TDT Design Jam so we can feature it and give feedback on it up upon request, of course on next week's episode so we'll be going through all of them together and hopefully you know we'll be able to learn something together from that and we really can't wait to see what you all have come up with oh and if you guys didn't catch the hashtag just now it's tdt design jam and it's on the screen right now mm -hmm. awesome but yeah, thank you so much for everyone that has participated in today's podcast and yeah, have and watched it as well. We really do appreciate it. And we will see you again at the next drawing table. See you guys. Bye-bye. All right. Take care, everyone.